In this lecture, we will learn about one very important concept in C++ and that is static binding versus the dynamic binding of pointers to the derived class objects. Okay, This is one of the favorite interview questions I have seen that what is the difference between static binding and dynamic binding in C++. So I think you should be clearly comfortable with this question. So what it means? So again, let us take one example here of uh, what we are taking is one animal class. Okay. So animal is the base class. Now you derive, let's say a dog class from it, a cat class and let's say a horse class. Okay. So three classes are there and there is a method which is speak. Okay. And each animal we know that they speak, but dog barks, cat mews and horse neighs. Okay. So they have different kind of voices. So now what happens is that let's say what we learned in last class about polymorphism that a base class pointer is there. Okay. So a base class pointer is there and we learned that we can point it to any of the derived class objects. Okay. Then what happens is that whatever type of object of derived class object you point it to, it will become of it will call the method of that class particular class if you use a virtual keyword for that method in the derived class. Okay. So for example, here we saw in animal class, it was animal speaks, but in dog class, we saw it was dog box. So when you call the uh, make the base class pointer equal to a dog object and we make P animal arrow speak, it will call dog box. Okay. So this is one important property that when you have a base class pointer and you are making it point to any of your derived class which is not known while at compilation time. Okay. So at compilation time, I don't know which type of derived class object will my base class pointer point to. Then this is known as dynamic binding because only at runtime you are able to know your base class pointer is pointing to which class. So let us take a proper example, okay, which will help us understand the code. So this is again our well known animal class with age and weight. We have a speak method and a move method, both of which are virtual methods. Now we have a dog class, okay, so dog class we have a virtual speak dog box and move dog can run at 50 kilometers per hour. We have a cat class again derived from animal. It has a speak cat muse and it runs at 30 kilometers per hour. We have a horse class. Okay. It is publicly inherited from animal class here. The horse neighs and it moves at 70 kilometers per hour. So the derived class methods, they are specialized and they are different overriding the base class speak and move method. Okay. Now what I do is let's see how what I was telling about dynamic runtime binding. Okay. So I was talking about one important concept of runtime binding of object. So this is one important concept. So we have animal star animal array. So we have point an array of pointers to animal object. Okay. So animal array is an array of pointers to animal class. Now we have a for loop which takes runs three times and each time it is trying to ask the user to give some input. If the user gives input one, the pointer is assigned to a dog class. If it is two, it is assigned to cat class. And if the point well input is three, we assign the pointer animal pointer to the horse class. So how it is done? We take input. If input is one animal array, I is new dog. If input is two, it is equal to new cat. And if it is three, so it's new horse. So that's how in a loop of three. So animal array zero, animal array one, animal array two, they are assigned with any of the user's choice objects. So let's say that your first input is two. So now animal. Okay. So animal array zero will become equal to K. 
cat object okay a new cat so it will become equal to a cat pointer and then if you give and put three then the animal array one will become equal to horse and even if you give the last input as three the third object pointer will also point to a horse object so this is not known what the user is going to give the input is not known it will only become known at your runtime when the finally the user will give input and based on that your pointer will point to some different kind of objects so this is known as runtime binding and based on what your base pointer is pointing to whichever derived class it will call the method of that class so now if my animal array 0 is cat so when you call animal array 0 arrow move okay or arrow speak so this will call that cat muse okay and it will cat moves at 30 kilometer per hour something like that so this is the idea so the maximum speed we are talking about so this is basically the derived class objects method will be called so now let's try to run this code so we have for all the three objects at the pointers i will call the speak and move and let's try to see this what will happen so we run it so let's see so enter your choice so let's make the second first object as cat the second choice let's make it as dog one third choice we make it as horse so first choice was cat so we were calling animal array speak so it says cat muse animal array zero dot move so cat can run at 30 kilometers per hour second object was dog so dog barks dog can run at 50 kilometer per hour final object was a horse horse nails it can run at 70 kilometers per hour so this gives us that at runtime you can point the object pointer to any of your derived class object and then if you call from that pointer your methods it will call the methods of your derived class so this is the beauty of uh, polymorphism your base class pointer can take form of any of your derived class object and call it okay and it is it can be done at runtime you don't know it at compilation time at runtime you can assign the pointer to different class objects and it will work fine so i hope you understand this thanks a lot if you like this video please subscribe to my channel thank you